Hi everybody, my name is Hannah and this is Pepper and Pine and today I want to share with you the materials that accompany the first grade Waldorf curriculum. Now a lot of these materials are going to work well with second grade and third grade and some of them are not necessary for first grade but they certainly do enhance the curriculum. So I'm going to start with the musical instruments first and in first grade it's the, f the time that you're going to begin with the recorder and I want to show you the one that we have here. Now music instruction is wow this is difficult to open <laughs> here we go now music instruction is something that is going to be in every grade in a Waldorf school and the very first instrument that you begin with is a recorder and this one is just so beautiful I'm gonna leave all the links in the description box below for where you can find these products now uh, this is what you can use in first grade I'm gonna show you another musical instrument as well and then as you move through the grades, there'll be different musical instruments that are introduced. And I think around fourth grade, the string instruments are introduced. And if you don't know how to play, that's okay because most curricula do come with some instructions on how to begin music instruction. This is a glockenspiel and it is so beautiful. And I feel like this is a little bit easier to learn how to play than the recorder, but I think that this just depends on your musical abilities. So again, this one is not actually necessary for first grade, but we do have this in our homeschool and the kids can use it from anywhere as young as preschool all the way up through middle school for sure. Let's move on to some of the toys for first grade. And when you think of toys, you have to really shift your thinking when it comes to Waldorf inspired toys. So this is a really beautiful piece of silk. These are by Sarah's Silks and we got these from A Child's Dream, but you can find these at a variety of vendors online, Etsy and eBay. And these are something that you're gonna find in as young as preschool and kindergarten in a, in a Waldorf inspired uh, school or homeschool. And I have kept these in our school and homeschool for ages because my kids all the way up until high school actually still play and use these. So my junior high students will not just use silks, but any kind of fabric to make uh, forts and use them as dress up and all kinds of things. So these are wonderful open-ended all-natural toys and what I find so valuable in an all-natural toy is that if they do get broken they're more easily mended because they are from all-natural materials rather than from plastic which once it breaks it breaks and you have to throw it out but I've had silks only just recently got a tear in it and that's because my child had taken a bean bag and put it in oh here it is <laughs> that's appropriate he had put it inside and tied a, a rubber band around it and had thrown it around so that was the first time any of our silks actually ripped and that was due to some really uh i want to call it some rough play but i would suggest that if your child decides to do something like that then to use cotton or canvas for that kind of a game, but otherwise these have held up really well over the years. It's great for dress up as well. So let's take a look at these bean bags. Now these bean bags are especially great for morning activities. So the way that you can play with these is number one, just have two people toss them back and forth. But if you have a larger group of students or kids, you can use this to toss it to a student to answer a question. And for us, we like to do math questions because those are pretty easy to do with morning activities. So you might toss it to a student and say, what is two plus two? Or if your student is older, you can say, what's two times three? Or if your student is older than that, you can say, what's four times six minus seven? And you can get as complicated as you want, as long as it's still mental math, and the bean bags really work well for that. You can come up with a ton of ideas with bean bags. That is just a couple of them. All right, so moving on to some more toys. Actually, these toys have some educational significance as well, but primarily you can look at these little peg dolls as well as these little finger puppets as open-ended little dolls and little figures that the kids can play with. Recently, we put little letters on the small peg dolls and capital letters on the larger peg dolls, and that way it's become uh, 
an educational tool for first grade for my daughter, but at the same time, she really loves to play with these as little dolls. So they have both play significance as well as educational significance, but that's not always the case with Waldorf toys and Waldorf materials. You're not looking to create a, an academic experience with your playthings. Really, playthings are meant to be enjoyed in the imaginary sense and the pretend play sense. All right, so in addition to the peg dolls, we have a lot of finger puppets. And these finger puppets we use to in our homeschool in order to tell the weather. So this one says cold and this one says windy. And then we have a couple other ones here and I have tutorials on how to make all of these and that video is linked down below. And so we use these along with this block here that says weather and then my kids could put the little finger puppet with the correct weather onto this little wooden block. However, these ended up being really fun playthings, not just educational things. And so oftentimes they were off of this little wooden block and they were off being played with because that's what the children like to do. All right, so uh, in order to make these different peg dolls, I would recommend some of this 100% wool felt. And again, links are in the description box below for where you can find this as long as well as the peg dolls and the finger puppets. And this is going to hold up really well over the years. We have some made out of this wool felt that have lasted over 10 years and it ages really well as opposed to the acrylic felt that you will find at most craft stores. All right, let's move on to a couple of the activities that you might find in a first grade classroom as well as even in kindergarten. Let's start with these sun catchers. Now I have right here a variety of paper. We have some kite paper and this is really durable, thin sheets of translucent paper and it works really well to make these sun catchers. I have this little book that has all these different instructions on how to make them. It actually is fairly easy, a little time consuming, but really straightforward. And this is what they look like when they're done. And they look really fabulous hanging in a window. In addition to the sun catchers and the kite paper, I also have some origami sheets. Now we haven't actually used this for its intended purpose, which is to make different figures using this paper. My daughter really likes it for her other paper craft projects. And so we have this on hand for her as well. And then the last thing I wanna show you is this tissue paper, which is different than the tissue paper that you would find at a gift supply store or party store. This is still thin like that tissue paper. However, it is pigmented so that when you add water to it, the color will bleed off onto paper. And while I like that, <laughs> you may find that this becomes a messy project. However, I, I really do like the versatility of having this tissue paper uh, contain that pigment so that you can use it in multiple ways. It also comes in these really beautiful, vibrant colors, which are great for a lot of different projects. All right, so I want to share with you a couple of the books that have really helped us in our creative part of our journey when it comes to making our toys for our Waldorf homeschool. And Making Peg Dolls is a book that I picked up recently and we have really been enjoying it. These little creations are so adorable and they're gonna complement your homeschool and just your play space so beautifully. Now, as a beginner, when it comes to making peg dolls, I found that this book was, it, it helped you go from being a beginner to being intermediate, even advanced in a really short space of time. You just have to give yourself a little bit of time in order to get there. And also you have to be uh, a little patient because some of these different projects do require a bit of time and it can be a little frustrating when you're expecting to get the final result super fast. But I find this book to be one of my best uh, most valuable books in our homeschool library as far as any kind of toy making book. The next book I want to share with you is called Crafts Through the Year and this one will give you all different kinds of activities and crafts that you can do related to the season. Now I did not find this book as 
inspiring as I had hoped, but you may find it inspiring and you may have access to more of these materials than I do, which will make it a lot easier for you to do some of these crafts. And in the very least, it gives you some ideas of what you can do throughout the season in order to celebrate those different seasonal changes. The next two books I want to share with you are called Autumn and Winter. There are actually four in this series. It goes through the different season and it will give you different songs and verses and different things that you can use in your homeschool either as part of your morning activities or to begin a main lesson. So I like these because they are geared towards each of the seasons and especially in the kindergarten Waldorf curriculum, the seasons really are what drive the whole curriculum and drive the rhythm of the year. So having this, especially starting in kindergarten, is going to be of great value to you, especially if you are trying to create your own curriculum. The last book I want to share with you is called The Living Alphabet, and this one is going to go through the different letters of the alphabet, and on each page then you can try to find some of the things that start with that letter. This has been a nice addition to our homeschool, but my kids did not really care for this book as much as I thought they would, but this makes a nice complement to the main lesson block on learning letters. The next thing I want to show you is this Beeswax by Stockmar. This will come in handy, especially in first grade. This is great for tactile learners who need to be doing something with their hands while a lesson is going on. I found that it was a lot easier to use this when the days were warmer. Even though I like to pull this out in the winter, I found it really frustrating for the kids because it, it wasn't as flexible. You can see it's a nice warm day today. It's very easy to use. You can use it for figures. You can use it for manipulatives, for math. So a lot of things that you can do with this and this has been around forever. I remember this when I was in first grade at my Waldorf school and you know what? They smell the same. The next thing I want to show you is a recent addition to our homeschool and my kids love this. This is called Creative Story Cards by Ibu and they come with these really beautifully illustrated cards that are really high quality and nice finish on them. I expect them to really last a long time. They're very durable. Now, these do not have any words on them. You create your own story and the game comes with some suggestions on how you can do that. There are a couple different ways that you can make these stories. Now that reminds me that there are a couple more books that I wanna share with you. Because storytelling is at the heart of the Waldorf education, if you're not accustomed to doing your own stories, then this book is really going to help you. It's called Storytelling and the Art of Imagination. And this has been such a gem in our homeschool. I have read this multiple times, although I tell you, I have not actually finished the whole book. It is so packed with information and, and wisdom that I keep having to set it aside and implement what I've learned that I've never actually gotten to the end of the book. I'm getting there though, don't worry. <laughs> so this book is gonna really help you if you are creatively challenged when it comes to story storytelling and that was me to a T. I could not come up with a creative story to save my life. This has really helped. I am never probably gonna be great at it, but this certainly helps. And this takes me to another point. Your children are going to love what you create no matter what it is because when you are when you are giving from the heart it is received with the heart and you're not going to have somebody saying that was a terrible story or that was a uh, you know a, a terrible uh, little doll that you made or a peg doll your your children are just going to love it because you did it so if, even if you're a little concerned about coming up with your own stories, I just really recommend that you do so. Here's a little tip for you though, if you don't have this book or you just want to get started on it right away but you're still terrible at it. One of the first things I started doing, um, well actually I actually did this later, but one of the things that I did when I was really, really at a loss for a story was that I just retold stories from either other books or movies or even TV shows. I would just take the plot and some of the characters and just retell it for my kids and that made it super easy, especially when I had trouble either coming up with plots or with names of characters, which are the two things that I struggle with the most. So that reminded me that there were a couple other books that I wanted to share with you. 
I'm going to share this one in a little bit, but first I want to share with you the Waldorf Book of Animal Poetry, and this one is just the Waldorf Book of Poetry. I don't think you need both of them. I think just any book on poetry is going to be fine because this is going to come in handy when you are looking for poetry or verses to begin your school day or to begin your main lesson block. And I really, really like the way that these two books are organized. It makes it super easy to find a poem related to whatever subject matter you are going to be doing. So I've used this book already. This is new to our collection. I used it this past year and it made it super easy to come up with uh, poetry for different main lesson blocks that we were doing. Something else I want to share with you are these felted uh, toys. The, this happens to be like the vegetables and fruit for a little fruit stand. Picked up this little crate from Target. It just really suited our needs really well. But uh, this is not a project for a first grader. This would be something that you would do and then your children could play with them. Uh, this requires the use of a very sharp needle that unless you are really skilled and even if you are you're still going to poke yourself with it. This is a really sharp needle that is intended for more like maybe 10 to 12 year olds and you just this is 100% wool and you just shape it the way you need and then you are poking it with the needle until it holds its shape. And then once you have the shape that you want, you can cover it with the color that you want. And in that way, you can make all kinds of things. I've got a carrot and a tomato and some grapes here. And the thing is, is that these are going to become great playthings for your kids. Now, my daughter made this one, which is an egg, and she also made some raspberries in here. So my kids do use the felting tools with my supervision. She is six and she's been using these since she was five, but it is not recommended for that age group in a Waldorf school. But the products of the felting are certainly things that your children could play with and, uh, and even use within your main lessons. Oh, and the other thing that you'll need for this is this foam block here that you can pick up from craft stores so that you protect your fingers in the process. Let me show you one more thing related to pretend play, and that is this wooden clip here. It has a rubber band and has these two pieces of wood. These are handmade, they're beautiful, and they're used to keep uh, pieces of fabric together and they work pretty well but if you tug on them they will come out now we have a couple of these my kids have used them they've enjoyed them but on occasion when they're making an enormous fort and they need something more I found that these binder clips work super well and they're actually quite a bit stronger but you do want to be careful because they are so strong they will keep your fabric in place really well but they could also tear your fabric just because they are really strong but if if you do not have these or you can't afford them because these are really pricey, then you could use these. I want to show you one more thing that's new to our homeschool that I absolutely love. This is a nutcracker and we don't just use it to crack nuts. This would be great as a fall activity. You just turn it and there the nut cracked and that's it. You can pop it open and what's great is that this makes a really wonderful healthy snack and in addition to that you end up with these beautiful little shells and we're not going to waste these we are going to turn these into little projects here this is a little baby inside here and this is on its way to becoming a little sailboat here are the sails that still need to be glued on and here's another little baby inside of a shell so you can get creative with your things. So this would serve a couple of purposes. This is a great tactile project. The kids could crack the nuts as part of their morning activities. This would be especially great for the fall. Uh, let's do one more thing before we go on to the supplies that are, are pretty necessary for first grade. Uh, this is a basket that we've had in our home for many years and it works well for our nature basket. So on occasion, we'll have things that we actually found 
like this from nature and other times these are some things that we put here as part of another main lesson block for my fifth grader from the previous year but this idea is going to work well with all grades in a Waldorf school where you can whatever you've collected outside on your nature walks or on trails you can bring in and put in this a basket or on a table and if you don't have anything specifically from outdoors you can also just arrange your own things now uh, it's recommended that you cycle through the different kingdoms so the mineral kingdom the animal kingdom the plant kingdom and human so this would be from the plant kingdom if you are doing things from the mineral kingdom you might include things like gems and this is petrified wood into your nature table and then you could find things from the animal kingdom but those might be a little more difficult to bring in since you probably don't want animals in your home like that unless they're intended to be there but that's something that you could rotate through the the different seasons at least I want to show you one more activity that isn't necessary in first grade but it is a really great thing to have. I've got two little beginner uh, finger knitters, but they are they involve making knots. So this one is called the knitting tower, and it's we haven't done it enough here for me to show you what it looks like, but you can see it here. And this is a great tactile activity for first grade. And this one is a really cool activity. I don't want to actually mess up what my son has already started here, but you're basically removing these and putting them on the other side, which also is really great for math, not not like addition, subtraction, but just understanding where these different pieces are going in order to produce this really cool knotted rope here. And my son added these little charms along the way as you know he just slipped them on as he was making it so I'm not sure what he plans to do with this but this is as far as he's gotten now one tip would be to use as thick of possible of string or yarn as you could to do this we had this with embroidery floss and it was taking forever to do so the thicker the better the faster you'll get your results now when you start first grade you're also going to be starting knitting and there are these are the two or this is the brand that i like the best it's called lamb's pride and it is wool yarn and there are two different weights this is the worsted weight this is the bulky weight and i want to show you the difference between the two the bulky weight is the brown one and the worsted weight is the green one so you can tell this one is thinner so with beginner knitters it is better to start with the thicker yarn and it will tell you on the package what size needle to use and so this one is ten and a half and I happen to have ten so we were using the size 10 needles with the bulky weight and then we also have the worsted weight and it says to use size eight for those, but we also have a project going here. This is my son's project and he's also still using the size 10 needles. The larger the needle size, the easier it's going to be for your child and the faster he will finish his project, which is going to make it a little bit more satisfying because it can get really tedious after a while, especially if you're a new knitter and you just are slow or you make a lot of mistakes it's going to be a lot easier to get through your project faster so i want to show you a couple of the projects that are typical for first grade so this is one of the first projects that my i can't remember which son made this i think my second son made this one and it actually is the I made the exact same project when I was in first grade only mine was red so what you will end up getting is a a piece of fabric and what the teacher will help you do is kind of pinch it here and help you put eyes on it and maybe a little tail and you end up making your own little animal this is <laughs> it's supposed to be a cat but you know you can get a little creative with it one of the other projects that you're going to do in first grade are one of these balls there I've got two of them here and uh, this one is super easy to do. There's no knitting involved. I don't have a tutorial on this one yet, but look out for one. This one goes about um, medium. I guess if you make it smaller, it can be a fast project. This is great to keep those little fingers busy while you are doing other things. 
This one is a really fun beginner project. You would start the same way this one is started. In fact, maybe that's what this project was. So you will do this little segment here and then you'll move on to another color. This one has four colors. It's pretty easy to get the segments together, but if you'll notice you have a ball shaped, but you're starting out with a rectangular shaped piece of knitted fabric <laughs> and you're basically pinching these pieces together is how you end up with this ball. It was super simple to make. Another project that you're going to find in first grade and beyond is weaving. This is a weaving project that one of my kids already started. We made our own little template here. It's super easy to make. I have a tutorial on this. It's linked below. And this is a fairly fast project. You could do this in one day and you also will make it easier if you have one of these needles. These are blunt and they have a wide eye here so that you can fit some yarn through it. And this is a project that you can make from it. Super simple, really easy. Can put little things in here like these two little peg dolls. <laughs> they don't fit. <laughs> so anyway, um, these are uh, really easy and satisfying to make because they don't take too much time to make. All right, I wanna show you these counting sticks. These are made from hardwood dowels. I made these just getting a long dowel from the hardware store and then we cut them down. Now these are really old. Uh, these are some of the first things that we had in our own homeschool. So more than 10 years old, you can see they've taken on this beautiful color over time, which is one of the perks of having all natural materials is that they just get better with age. I have a tutorial on how to make these. It's super simple. Now you can use this for rhythmic uh, counting and for skip counting. So this is this might come in handy like more like in second and third grade but we use them as young as first grade and sometimes it was just for rhythmic counting and then other times we could do skip counting so you might say and you can do this with clapping as well you can just clap your hands you don't need the sticks but i had boys for the first 12 years of my parenting life and sticks were good so you might you might do like uh one two three and then three won't be counted or the other way around one two three four five six seven eight nine or you could just tap them three six nine so there's a couple of different ways that you can use your counting sticks depending on how you want to do your rhythmic skip counting but these are super simple really easy to make and they were a nice addition to our homeschool Candle making is something else that's pretty quintessential in a Waldorf school. I have these rolled candles here. There are kits, like a ton of different kits online for making these. We get other candles that we light on a daily basis. Just a nice way to start the day. You can also do some dip candles. I forgot, I have got tutorials on both of these. You can check the description box below for those links. And then you can do some uh, hand dip candles as well. And that's really great. I especially like it in the winter time. And then you can actually light these candles and it's just a nice cozy way to uh, either start your school day or just for your school day to progress. I want to show you this book. This is basically uh, the Grimm's fairy tale, like one of I think a complete collection of the Grimm's fairy tales. Now, this particular book is not necessary for first grade. I have found that a lot of the curricula will already contain the fairy tales necessary for that grade level. Uh, and usually they are pre-selected so that you can avoid some of the more gruesome and dark fairy tales. If you've never actually read the original fairy tales and not the quote unquote Disney version of the fairy tales that are more popular today, you will find that they are slightly grotesque, um, a little bit scary, and you know, really honestly not suitable for a first grader. So you're, you're gonna wanna go through them. There's a ton that are totally suitable. The 12 Princesses, I believe, is one that my kids really liked. Uh, the 12 Dancing Princesses, I think that one is really simple and, and kind of beautiful. So you can, Get your own uh, Grimm's fairy tale or just any fairy tale book to have on hand as an additional resource in case you do not want to use the ones that are suggested in the curriculum.
Now on to the to really the absolute basic supplies. I've really done this backwards, but I want to show you when you actually start your main lessons. And actually, let me just take a minute to explain what the main lessons actually are because it can be of some confusion because the Waldorf curriculum is going to go about doing lessons in a really different and I feel unique way you are not going to be having necessarily every subject matter being covered every day. Instead, you will have main lesson blocks and those blocks will run anywhere from three to four weeks and they will concentrate on a particular subject area. And there are no textbooks and there are no workbooks and there are no quizzes and tests. So how do you do this? <laughs> uh, the teacher will deliver a lesson orally. Now this is a very teacher involved uh, you know, you, it requires you being present for these lessons. You're not handing your child a book to read on his or her own and then doing worksheets. You really need to be able to dedicate the time to do this because it is quite involved. So you will be offering the lesson to your child who will then, uh, for first grade, there won't be a lot of writing. So they'll mostly be drawing, especially with some of the very first main lessons, which have to do with form drawing. And then later, they will create their own readers. Rather than buying readers, you will actually be making them with your child or your child will be making them. This is a main lesson book where you're going to be putting in your different main lessons. All right, so this one is 12 inches by 9 inches. Typically, in a Waldorf school, you're going to be using your block and stick crayons. And so let me show you what these look like. These are the stick crayons, and they're quite thick, which is super great because they're less likely to snap. Now, they still will, but definitely not as easy as the typical crayons. I know, I have boys, and... <laughs> One of their like most satisfying things to do was to snap crayons, but these ones, they're going to simply last longer. I, I know my boys will still enjoy trying to snap them, but they are quite sturdy. But if you are worried about that, because I know that these are expensive and that question comes up a lot because once they're snapped or once the paper is off, or they're all in a bin, they're just not as enjoyable to use. And so I have a couple suggestions. The first one is to just get the block crayons because these ones are nearly impossible to snap. Okay, and you can make these too if you'd rather. So these are going to be really great for little fingers. They're nice and big. They're good for like the more gross motor skills that children have an easier time with at this age. But if you do decide to go with these, and really you will be using these in conjunction with these at this age anyway, but when you do get these, I would recommend having a crayon holder like this. I have a tutorial on this. It's linked below. Uh, it, it was simple to make, but it was time consuming. I, it wasn't as beautiful as this one, though. This one is, uh, I got this handmade from a, a local Waldorf school. One of the parents had made it. So then you can put your crayons in each of the colors. It makes it easy for the children to identify the color that they need. And it also keeps the crayons fairly clean, especially if the paper falls off. And that way it shows um, some care and respect and reverence for your materials, which is a really big thing in a Waldorf school, in the Waldorf philosophy. And you also want to use high quality materials, which means that aside from them being expensive, you also want them to be cared for. And children will, res will respond to that, especially in something like this versus just a plastic bin with a bunch of crayons in. You your children are going to respond differently when they see this. So typically the block crayons are going to be used for bordering your page. I'm not going to write on this one right now, but you will be bordering your entire page with this block crayon before you actually begin your work. And typically your work will be with one of these rather than a pencil. So you'll start with your letters and your form drawings on, you know, in your main lesson books. And so you do need a really large piece of paper when you're working with such a large crayon or a large pencil because you're not going to start with your pencil until a little bit later. The other thing that is pretty important in first grade is watercoloring and I have here some of the watercolor paper that's recommended for this age group. So this is really heavy watercolor paper. This is about 140 pound and this is by Strathmore. So this is going to be the one really nice project that your child does because this paper is super expensive. So 
When you're working with the first grade student, you are going to be doing wet on wet watercoloring. And in general, and I forgot to mention this with the crayons, but usually you are only starting with your primary colors. So this is actually far more than a first grade student would have. You would really only have your red, I can see that's really been used down, uh, your yellow and your blue. And that's what you're going to start with. And with that, you're going to create all the other colors. Now for this project that I have here, this watercoloring project, we used uh, the Stockmar watercolors, and this is just a sample of them they come in this smaller size and in this larger size. This is extremely concentrated and very thick. You want to dilute it with water. And I learned this the hard way. You want to just go easy with how much you actually make because these tend to go bad after a while and uh, they smell horrendous if you leave them in here for a long time. So I would say don't, don't plan on having them in here for more than a couple weeks or a month because they start to smell. So this particular project that we did last year, I also have a tutorial on it that's linked below. This one was started just with a yellow background and after we did the yellow background, we brought in some red, which created the orange, and then we added a little bit of blue on top of that. So this drawing was only, or this painting was only made with yellow, red, and blue, and we got the different variations of orange and uh, green for the stem. And this is the one that my child made. Yeah, so I made the example that you just saw and then this is the one that my child made and you can see more of the variation in the color. You can really see the orange come out and then the green. And again, only made with three colors. And then the other thing is that you wanna be using your wide brushes. Uh, this one, it's really nice. <laughs> but anyway, you're going to be doing the, you're going to be using your wide brushes for this. And this is, here's another one. You're not going to be using the really small ones and, and actually this one's medium size, but you're not going to be using these small ones till much later. And you can see that these small ones would do better with a smaller piece of paper. When you're doing the younger grades, you want to keep it more the wet on wet is what you want to keep it because when you're doing the wet on wet watercoloring, you can see that all of these colors start to blend and move together and there are no well-defined edges. And that's the place that the child is in in first grade. There's just such movement between everything for the child that it's it's not a value to show concrete for anything. It's it's better to speak to that nature of that child. And I have done a poor job explaining that part, but it is something that is talked about, uh, especially with the Walder philosophy in that age group. The last thing, I think the last thing I wanna show you are these chalk pastels. And actually these are not the ones that you'll typically see in uh, like Waldorf supply stores. These ones are they have quite a bit of oil in them. They have really beautiful, rich colors. I absolutely love these. I am also linking a complete playlist of all the chalk drawings that we have done. Uh, so we have used these for our chalk drawings. Now the typical chalk that you'll find in uh, most Waldorf supply stores are going to contain a fraction of the colors, maybe 12 colors. They're a lot drier, a lot more chalky. These, I would put them in between an oil pastel and a chalk. So they're chalk pastels, they're in the middle. So they are gonna be more difficult to get off your chalkboard. And they are also, the you know, the pro is that they're going to give you a nice, rich, beautiful color. The typical chalks are going to be a, a little bit softer and they may blend better, I'm not sure, but they're gonna give you a, a different look. So I think that might be all the supplies that are of value for the first grade student. If there are things that I missed, which I'm sure there are things that I missed, please check the description box below because I usually fill that with a lot of information that's relevant to the video. And that way, if I've missed anything, then you can find those corrections in the description box below. And as always, if you have any questions uh, regarding any of the materials for first grade, you can leave them in the comment section below. And if you have used any of this, these materials and you have recommendations on other things that you have used, I would love to hear your thoughts as well.